Hey guys, I'm Jared Bronstein and this story is just heart wrenching to say the least. A mother and father of four children, all under the age of five years old, admitted to four counts of neglect at a courthouse. When officers first raided the Lancashire home, they found the four children with rashes all over their bodies and high temperatures. One baby wasn't wearing anything but a dirty diaper, while another girl was screaming after being trapped under a bed frame in a room full of feces and flies. The other two toddlers were found in a room that had feces literally smeared all over the walls. Reports claim one of the officers was so overpowered by the smell of the feces that he actually threw up multiple times. The father, aged 23, was sentenced to 14 months in jail, while the mother, aged 29, was handed a 14 month suspended sentence after the judge agreed she suffered from a mental health condition and didn't feel she would be able to cope in prison. While she was given the sentence, she shook violently and cried. The judge who sentenced them was quoted saying, This was a deplorable and appalling state of affairs. I am satisfied that all this shows you have complete indifference to their welfare. The prosecutor on the case, Francis McEntee, explained what the officers saw when they first entered the house and the reasoning that they were there in the first place. It turns out they were looking for a third party and when the father came to the door, he was wearing nothing but his underwear. That is when the mother came to the door and said the officers were on her property to bully her. He went on to explain permission was given for a search. Whilst they were on landing, they noticed three bedrooms, two of which had the door shut. A child could be heard. The door was tightly shut. The officer opened it and he was hit by a vile and horrid stench. Officers found there was fecal matter smeared and sprayed across the walls and indeed it had become apparent that the lower half appeared to have been repainted. The officers noted 50 15 heavily soiled nappies or diapers full of urine and fecal matter which was open to the air. And as awful as this is, unfortunately, it gets much worse. McEntee continued by saying the floor itself was covered in feces and scraps or stale food and there appeared to be intermingling of the two. There were plastic children's drinking cups with fluid that appeared to be settled with fecal matter on those cups. Within the room were two children dressed in just t-shirts. One of them had dry blood across the bridge of his nose and upper lip. Their appearance was described as disheveled and dirty with food in his hair and stains around the body. There appeared to be an abrasion to the forehead, which appeared to have been neglected, dirty, and sore. They were very quiet. Neither children appeared to have been cleaned. The room had an upturned bed with a soiled mattress with no bedding or blankets. They then found the last toddler who was stuck under the bed frame and worked together to help her get out from under it. The house was also without hot water. The children were trying to eat from empty food packets and when police tried getting them a drink, they saw mold on their bottles. The children were described to the court as youngsters who do not show emotion and were, I quote, for all intent and purposes dumb, described as like zombies. The father claimed one of the children had chicken pox which must have spread and also said he bathed the children in the kitchen sink. He said he had been trying his best to take care of the family since his partner suffered from mental illness. The mother also said the children had a habit of taking off their diapers and smearing poop on the wall, but that gets me thinking why weren't they changed more frequently if that was the case. I think the worst part of this story is that the family was given more than one chance to keep their children. Amanda Hatton, Director of Children's Services, Lancashire County Council, claims the family was referred to local authority when police initially visited the property. They set up a secure home for the children outside of the family home, but when put before a family court, the court actually disagreed the conditions were bad enough to take the children away. Now we don't know how bad things were when they were first visited, but still, I'm happy these children will be given a fresh start and not have to deal with these awful conditions anymore. As always, you guys gotta drop me a comment down below with some of your thoughts on this story. My name is Jared Bronstein and I will see you guys soon.